Hello to everybody tuning in. Uh, we are about to watch NG19 from Wallops Island. I will be on camera in just a moment here. I hope everybody is doing well. It looks like my feed has gotten a little wonky here. Yep, it did. It is cons. It is totally screwed itself up. So give me a moment here to fix this. We're looking at about a launch in about seven minutes from Wallops Island. Updating my thumbnail here. So we're looking at the final flight of the uh, NG, uh, well, not the NG, the Antares 230 Plus series or the 200 series, re really. This is the Antares 230 Plus booster uh, that is going to be flying a Northrop Grumman Cygnus uh, commercial resupply vehicle uh, to the International Space Station carrying about 4,000 pounds of supplies. We have an instantaneous launch window at roughly 8.31 in about six minutes. I will share my screen with me. Hi, you can see me now. Uh, we're right now, you're looking at the camera of a longtime friend of the channel, uh, or friends of the channel, Noah and Luke. Um, they are out on Wishart Point, about three miles away from uh, the launch site. They've got a couple cameras set up. They're going to try to live switch. Let's see the launch from a different perspective. This is going to give you a great idea of what it's like to see the launch from there. It's really incredible. Cannot recommend it enough. Um, so, yeah, we are looking at a launch in about six minutes. Let me know if you can hear me coming in. Bring the volume a little bit. People are chatting. I'm going to... Asking Noah if we can increase the uh, the exposure. So, um, yeah, there is. Oh, feet's gone black. Let's see. There, they're back. Um. So yeah, it's a little pixelated. Apologies, guys. It is tough out there with um, the cell signal. Let's put it frankly here. Uh, we've tried our best to pump this um, quality as much as we can. And um, when you're out there in the sticks, uh, it only does so much. But I'm going to see if I can do something here real quick to reset the feed. And in hopes, yeah, it's still pumping through that lower resolution. Um, but you can still make out the rocket. So yay. Um, so you can bounce between this perspective and from the NASA official feed if you'd like. So you can kind of see both angles simultaneously. Um, but yeah, so what is unique about this? Well, this is the last time we're going to see this booster fly. Um, Cygnus or Antares as a launch family will live on, but it's going to be fundamentally a completely different rocket. Um, this rocket here is flying with the RD-181 um, engine um, from Russia. Um, and the the, uh, the core stage, the first stage, was built in Ukraine. But unfortunately, due to the war in Ukraine, um, the booster facility has been destroyed um, or very severely damaged and it's obviously they are no longer able to build these boosters anymore so this is the last one off the assembly line essentially um picture is looking a little bit better um uh, 
So what we're going to be seeing is another iteration of this rocket um, flying in a few years. It's going to have the same solid rocket motor second stage. It's going to have the same fairing. It's going to be flying Cygnus. Uh, but the first stage is going to be very different. It's, going to be, uh, it's a bit of a collaboration between Northrop Grumman and Flyer, Firefly. Um, and uh, it's going to have uh, different engines, different, oh, a little bit of a wider, wider first stage. Um, and I believe uh, a little bit more performance. Um, and all US made, obviously, so there's security in that. Um, the uh, premiere launch was supposed to be at the end of next year. I'm not sure if we're going to see that. Um, so we're probably looking at roughly a, a mid to late 2025 window for when uh, the next version, the Antares 300 series, will fly. We're about two minutes away from liftoff, so it's going get, to get spicy here pretty quick. Yep, the kid's counting down for us. So, um, what the uh, Cygnus will continue to fly uh, to the International Space Station in the meantime. Uh, Northrop Grumman has purchased, uh, I believe, three Falcon 9 launches to be able to fulfill the, their commitment to NASA. Um, what's nice about Cygnus is that it is launch vehicle agnostic. It can fly on pretty much any medium lift or above um launch vehicle so it has flown on the atlas before when antares did have its incident uh in 2014. we're getting about one minute away from launch so this thing is if it's not flying in two minutes we know it's a scrub yep we're 60 seconds away as folks are saying this visual should also get better with um more light from the rocket motors so Cygnus has flown on two vehicles so far, and it will fly on three soon with Falcon, which uh, makes Cygnus very versatile. Um, we could also probably expect to see Cygnus flying on uh, Vulcan and um, potentially New Glenn one day with their variety of partnerships with Orbital Reef and their other stations. So it's pretty dark out there. So they're doing their best with the cameras they got. And let's see, this is looking like a pretty clear picture. 15 seconds. Let me crank up the line. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, I might have scrubbed. Oh. There we go. There we go. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Oh, oh, my God. So many pixels. Okay, we're flying. Oh, my God. <laughs> nice cut, guys. Nice cut to the wide. Listen, and the heart gets so straight. Oh, yeah. looking great. I bet that's incredible in person. Nice cut, guys. There it goes. It's a race. 230 plus for the final time in its life. Antares' is a launch vehicle has been flying uh, over 10 years. And uh, the name will live on, but this booster will end up in the Atlantic for the final time. Two of us here, at least. Gotta go. Uh, to give them credit out there at Wallops, um, it is a beautiful place to see launches. You can get very close to the uh, pad. Um, you can see the launch from out there in Chicoteague, Virginia, which is a really distinct angle that you can't get anywhere else, really, because the rocket kind of flies towards you. And there's a few great angles out near Wallops Island. Antares has been a really reliable vehicle. There was one failure in 2014, and that has obviously been remedied. And the Space Force is going to get pretty busy here in the next several years with uh, Electro uh, Rocket Lab's Neutron rocket um, that will be flying from Wallops. And Wallops uh, is also flying Electron. So in the next three years, um, there will be three different orbital rockets flying out of Wallops, the Antares 300 series, Neutron and Electron. And then obviously their sounding rocket program. 
Great work, guys. Great job tracking. We got some guys out there who just volunteered to do this. They're going out to shoot. They've got some really cool cameras set up at the pad. Um, Slow-mo cams. We'll be sharing. I'll be sharing on Twitter probably tomorrow. So make sure you follow me at TJ underscore Cooney at Twitter or X or you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, Noah and Luke are out there doing a great job covering this event for a couple different media outlets. And they were kind enough to share their stream with me. And there's that dot out in the distance. I'll cut really quickly here to NASA's feed. Looking really good there. Not much different than them, to be honest with you. And they have uh, much more powerful lenses than uh, Noah and Luke. Uh, Noah and Luke, it looks like they've lost the tracking on the vehicle, but things are looking great. Thanks a lot for joining, everybody. I'm going to look at the chat real quick. I know I've been kind of blabbering away here. It's my first time doing a stream in a while. And... that's that well rest in peace Antares 230 plus I'm sorry that I had to end the way it did um, with the war it's really terrible quite tragic actually um, but all the more reason to try to keep our vehicles built in the US for both just national security and business reasons that's tough man and that's it. Looks like even NASA's lost the vehicle. Yep. First stage has completed its burn. The second stage is about to ignite. And it is a pretty metal um, experience because it is a solid rocket motor. It's based off of the Minuteman inter, uh, intercontinental ballistic missile. Um, the company that originally designed this rocket... Um, Orbital ATK, there goes the fairing, and there's Cygnus, Orbital ATK, um, did a great job utilizing just equipment that was in storage um, that was not being used, and they repurposed some of the solid rocket motors that uh, were largely going nowhere. And they still have a lot more in storage that they need to burn through, so the next version, the Antares 300 series with the Firefly engines, We'll be using these solid rocket motors as a second stage, um, I believe, until they burn through their inventory. And then there is going to be a liquid upper stage. Um, the details on that are still to be determined, I believe. That also, it, it does give the vehicle some more uh, abilities um, using liquid upper stages. And that's that. Well... No more really to watch here outside of a computer graphic, so I'm going to end the stream here. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining. I know that this was brief, but it was fun. And uh, Antares, we hardly knew ye. And uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing the 300 fly. Okay, everybody. See you later.